In this video, I will be talking about a procedure called parasynthesis. And this is a procedure that we use to remove fluid that could accumulate inside your belly. And in medical terms, this is called ascites. And I'm gonna go over everything. I'm gonna explain what is ascites, what are the symptoms to look for, how is the parasynthesis procedure actually performed, and what to expect after the procedure. There are many reasons why ascites can develop, but the most common one is actually liver disease or also called cirrhosis. And that can be related to alcohol or viral hepatitis, but there are also many other more rare forms of cirrhosis, including autoimmune diseases or accumulation of metals in the liver like hemochromatosis. Another cause of ascites is actually cancer that spreads to the peritoneum, which is the membrane around our bowel and the internal organs. It's usually secondary to some type of cancer, and the most common ones are ovarian cancer or some GI tract cancer like colon cancer, stomach cancer, or even pancreatic cancer. Other causes of ascites also include infectious diseases like tuberculosis or heart failure or renal failure, and also other inflammatory conditions like pancreatitis. Now, when we see a patient that has accumulation of fluid in the abdomen or ascites, and we're trying to figure out why, we try to divide the patients in two different categories. One is there's a transudate, which is a, essentially a very thin fluid that doesn't have a lot of cells or protein in it. It's basically water. And the second category, it's called an exudate. That's the medical term, but that means that that fluid has protein and cells on it. It's not as thin as water. And this is important because it helps us to differentiate the causes. If the fluids are transudate or the thin fluid, it's usually related to either liver disease or kidney failure or heart disease. Now, if the fluid is an exudate, which is that thick fluid that contains protein and cells, then it's more likely to be either a cancer, an infection, or an inflammatory process like a pancreatitis. And you should keep that in mind because I'll explain how we make that differentiation. Now, the main symptom of ascites is essentially abdominal swelling and bloating. Now, this could happen really slowly, so sometimes patients can take a long time to actually realize that they are accumulating fluid and may only realize that when they start developing pain or difficulty breathing. One way that patients can tell they're accumulating fluid is that they keep gaining weight despite the fact that they cannot eat very much because the accumulation of fluid compresses the intestine and causes nausea and lack of appetite. Now, it may be difficult sometimes to determine if the abdominal distension is related to fluid or distension of the intestine and accumulation of gas. But there is an easy way to tell, which is essentially doing an ultrasound, which is a quick exam that can tell precisely whether you have fluid in the abdomen. Certainly, if you're having symptoms related to the fluid, the easiest way to relieve those symptoms is to actually do the procedure called a paracentesis. Now, the procedure is a pretty simple and safe procedure. Essentially, all we do is we introduce the needle through the skin into the peritoneal cavity, and then we connect this needle to a vacuum bottle or some type of suction system to remove the fluid. The procedure can be done in the office or in the hospital, and it's done with the local anesthesia only. So essentially we clean the skin, of course, with an antiseptic solution. And then we give some local anesthetic with lidocaine. As you know, the lidocaine is like a bee sting. It can hurt a little bit when you do it, but then it numbs the skin. And the lidocaine is administered with a very small thin needle. And then we use a slightly larger needle. It's actually not that big of a needle to actually do the fluid extraction. And this needle is introduced in the peritoneal cavity under direct ultrasound visualization. We can see the needle going in and going through the fluid. In our practice, we usually use vacuum bottles and we, we drain the fluid. And the amount of fluid can vary a lot. Usually people do not have symptoms until they have one to three liters of fluid that accumulated. But sometimes patients can actually have a lot of fluid inside the abdomen. My all time record was removal of 26 liters of fluid. Can you imagine that? So if you imagine that every liter of fluid is about 2.2 pounds, 26 liters of fluid is over 50 pounds of weight. After placing the needle, and when you start removing the fluid, the procedure is painless and you just 
lie on the table and wait until the fluid is completely out. And this can take anywhere from five minutes to half an hour, depending how much fluid you have. Usually if we remove a lot of fluid from you, usually more than four liters, we tend to replace it with an IV solution of albumin, which is a concentrated form of IV fluids. Especially the first time that we remove the fluid, we'll always send that fluid for testing so we can find out what is the cause of the fluid accumulation. The most common tests that we send the fluid include cell count, so we check how many cells are in there, are they white cells, are they lymphocytes, are they neutrophils, what are they? and that can help us to diagnose infections, for example. We also send the fluid for albumin and protein to determine if the fluid is an exudate or a transudate, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. We usually send the fluid for cultures as well to rule out an infection, and we always send the fluids for cytology to make sure you don't have a cancer. We also need to do a blood test at the same time to check for the albumin because that's exactly how we know if this is a transudate or an exudate, because we compare the albumin in the fluid to the albumin in your blood. And then we do a little calculation to determine what is the sag. What is a sag? A sag is a serum to ascites albumin gradient, and I'll explain that to you. So a sag is the albumin in your blood minus the albumin in your fluid. So if that difference is high, meaning that the albumin in the fluid is very low, that means you have a transudate. And that means most likely the reason for the fluid accumulation is the liver or the heart. But if the sag is less than 1.1, meaning the albumin in the blood and the albumin in the fluid are almost the same, that means you have an exudate. And now we have to look for cancer infection or inflammation. Now, we also need to talk about the possible risks of the paracentesis. And the paracentesis is a very safe procedure. It's done many times a day in a medical environment, and the risk of complications is really, really low. But there is a risk of bleeding. There is a risk of an infection, potentially. And there is a risk that your blood pressure can drop, especially if we're removing large amounts of fluid. And that's why when we remove more than four liters, we usually replace fluid with an IV by infusing albumin, like I mentioned before. And the reason we replace with albumin is because of the very concentrated form of fluid. So hopefully that fluid will stay in your blood and it's not gonna leak directly into your abdomen again. Let's say if you replace just with the saline or regular water, the fluid will probably just go back to your abdomen almost instantaneously. Now, paracentesis is almost always done as an outpatient, which means you go home almost immediately after the procedure. Some patients have to rest for a little bit because they can get tired after the procedure just from removing all this fluid. When you go home, you should drink some fluids to try to stay hydrated, although you should avoid large amounts of salt intake because that can worsen the fluid and make it come back. Now, here are some things that you need to watch for after the procedure. Normally, a paracentesis is not a painful procedure. It can be a little sore. But if you develop severe pain, that's a warning sign and you need to contact us immediately. Now, after the procedure, try to lie down for some time so you can recover. Try not to get up and try to do too much right away until you know you're okay. If you develop dizziness or feeling like you're gonna faint, you should sit down or lie down and drink some fluids. Sometimes drinking something like Gatorade can help recovering from this. Other things to watch for is any type of fever or redness at the site, or maybe some discharge from the site. If that happens, that could be a sign of infection and you need to let us know. Now, you may not feel that great for a few hours, but recovery is usually quick and most people can go back to their normal activities by the next day. Now, one big question that people have is like, is the fluid gonna accumulate again? And the truth is, if we don't take care of the cause of the fluid accumulation, yeah, you will accumulate again. Now, it's hard to know how long it's gonna take, Sometimes it can be very quick and fluid can reaccumulate in a week, but sometimes it could take a long time and some patients, thankfully, the fluid may not come back. So it will depend and this is something we have to watch. And what are some things that can be done to prevent fluid accumulation? So that will depend largely on the cause. If you have cirrhosis, for example, try to restrict the amount of salt that you eat and we should start you on some diuretics, including Lasix and Spironolactone, to try to decrease the fluid accumulation. In some situations that we tried everything and the fluid continues to accumulate, 
maybe a TIPS procedure may be a good idea to you. And I made a whole video about that. Now, if the fluid accumulation is being caused by cancer, usually the best treatment is the treatment of the cancer itself that it can include chemotherapy or immunotherapy or whatever your oncologist recommends. If the fluid continues to accumulate, then we can consider placing a little faucet, a little catheter that goes into the abdomen so you can remove the fluid at home and don't need to have repeated procedures. And that's called a Pleurax catheter. And I also have a video about that. Thank you for watching. Fluid accumulation in the belly can be challenging, but a paracentesis is a simple procedure that can relieve a lot of those symptoms and improve the quality of life.